good morning and uh, thank you for joining us for our online office hours and uh, today we are going to talk about some uh, cool feature which we have uh, incorporated into pegasus and hope to release it uh, with the upcoming 4.9 uh, pegasus release and we are trying to put integrity checking automatically into pegasus so that when user workflows run uh, before any job starts uh, their data sets are automatically checked to make sure there's no corruption that's happened uh, in transit or at multiple points. So this work we've uh, done as part of the SWIP grant which we have, and this is a collaboration with uh, uh, folks at uh, RENCI at IU. So it's a big uh, cross collaborative grant where you know, our main goals are that we want to provide additional assurances that a scientific workflow is not accidentally or maliciously tampered uh, during its execution. We want to be able to allow for detection or modification to the data and executables at later dates to facilitate reproducibility and uh, integrate cryptographic support for data integrity into Pegasus WMS. So, this talk is going to mainly focus on the last part of uh, what we've done so far to put in uh, this support as part of this project. So what are some challenges to scientific data integrity? You know, modern IT systems are not perfect. Errors creep in. Uh, we are already starting to see that, you know, for very large files, uh, TC che TCP checksums are starting to break down. And then there's always a threat of intentional changes, malicious attackers, insight threats, etc. So what were our motivations for going down this path and uh, uh, embarking on this project? You know, there are like a couple of uh, widely cited use cases which, you know, we've come across and our users have also encountered that served as a driving force of doing this work. So one uh, very popular uh, study about disk errors at rest is a CERN study done in 2007, where they examined disk memory and RAID 5 errors. And it said that you know, disk errors can be introduced even at rest, and they don't get uh, checked. So they, are, they, they explored many fixes and uh, often have significant, significant performance trade-offs, but you know, what that leads us uh, to believe is that even once you have generated the output data sets, maybe you know, there can silent corruption happen uh, over a period of time. Uh, then other sort of corruption which you know, our users encountered is sort of network corruption where, you know, uh, exceed site, they upgrade their networking uh, infrastructure, and, uh, you know, the new network router software inadvertently corrupted the TCP data and checksums. So this is an example which is cited from uh, 2013, and then, you know, through also running, uh, our users running Pegasus workflows also uh, encountered a similar issue earlier in 2017. And lastly, you know, like it's not only infrastructure, there can be software failure in the underlying transfer data transfer tools you're using. For example, uh, you know, one of our users, when they run on Open Science Grid, they use Stash Cache, which is very popular to uh, pull data uh, on Open Science Grid. And there was a bug that got introduced where uh, there were silent uh, failures, but the data transfer code initially was uh, still uh, signaling success. And as a result, you know, uh, the users had some in internal data cleanup triggered in Pegasus, and we only ended up detecting this error once a subsequent uh, stage got executed that the data was corrupted and at that time you know uh, the workflow during its execution had already uh, deleted the previous data sets 
So we ended up losing a lot of competition and uh, there were a lot of unnecessary retries. So for all these uh, cases uh, outlined, uh, you know, application level checksums are a good approach to try and catch this problem early on and avoid wasted computations and corruption of data. Uh, so in many cases, uh, you know, a lot of data transfer applications like SCP, Global Spirit FTP, some parts of SQ Founder do use checksums. But, you know, as a scientist, to include all aspects of the application workflow requires either, you know, you instrument your application and your data to read and enforce checksums, or, you know, we explore the idea of letting some other higher level ent entity do these checksums on the scientist's behalf. And that's where, you know, we decided to take advantage of Pegasus uh, to do that. So integrity checking can be very tedious and error prone. You know, for example, like literally what it boils down to is, you know, before any user application starts, you make sure that, you know, uh, you check some all the input data and then try and verify uh, whether um, the checksum is correct or not. So there are a lot of repetitive star, uh, tasks that need to be done. Uh, there's a lot of issues about, you know, as new data products are created, checksums are generated on the fly. How do you manage all this provenance and metadata and how to protect it? So these tasks can be easily automated using uh, Pegasus WMS, which abstract maps and abstract high-level workflow to computing infrastructure. And we can provide knobs to the user on how intrusive they want their uh, checksum in integrity checking uh, to be. So uh, from a Pegasus perspective, what were our goals uh, when we embarked on this project? So, you know, we wanted to capture data corruption in a workflow by performing integrity checks on data. We wanted to come up with a way to query, record, and enforce checksums for different types of files in uh, an application workflow. You know, at a high level, any workflow has some raw input files, which are usually fetched from an uh, input data server that a user controls. Then there are some intermediate outputs which are created by the jobs in the workflow. And then there are output files, which are the final outputs, which a scientist is actually interested in, and they get transferred by Pegasus to the output side. Uh, we wanted to modify Pegasus to perform integrity checksums at various parts of the workflow, and also provide users on a dial on the scope of integrity checking. So before we go on that, uh, I wanted to do a brief recap of what data staging configurations Pegasus supports and our users uh, run their workflows in. So one is uh, a Condor IO mode, which is very popular for use in HP Condor pools, OSG. And it's a non-shared file system environment where you know, your compute nodes don't have access to shared storage and all data gets pulled up from the workflow submit host via inbuilt HT Condor file transfers. So as a user, you don't need to worry about setting up any data servers or uh, getting access to data servers hosted by the infrastructure. Then we have a non-shared file system approach, which is again, very popular in clouds and open science grid, where you can leverage the infrastructure provided data servers to get data to your uh, uh, to the worker nodes where your jobs start, and in this case also, normally you know you assume that your jobs and your worker nodes don't have access to shared file system. So, uh, for example, in in the cloud case, uh, you know, you're running workflows on Amazon EC2, then you will end up using S3 to pull the data, and then the last approach is uh, the shared file system approach where uh, there is a shared file system across the worker nodes and IO is done directly against the shared file system. 
So, um, so for uh, automatic integrity checking uh, in 4.9, what we have done is we've tackled the first two configurations, uh, the non-shared file system and Condor IO mode to instrument and uh, do the integrity checksums on input files before a job starts on a remote node. Uh, you know, we provide options to the users to provide checksums for the raw inputs, which are posted, and we can also compute checksums uh, on the fly if a user does not provide any checksums for their inputs. Uh, all input, all intermediate and output file checksums are generated and tracked within the system, and we are using SHA-256 checksums, and failure is triggered if the checksums fail. So the way we've implemented this approach is that both in Condor IO and non-shared FS mode, when a job starts, it gets wrapped with a lightweight Pegasus instant called Pegasus Lite, which is responsible for bringing in the input data uh, that a job requires, setting up the worker node for job execution. When the job finishes, uh, the data products are staged back to the staging site, which is configured for the workflow by the user. Uh, so what we have done is we expanded on this uh, Pegasus Lite uh, lifecycle where once input data has been brought in, we have added integrity check uh, uh, commands in the Pegasus Lite instance that will check on the integrity data. Um, and then when a job completes, before pushing the data out to the staging server, we compute the checksums for the newly formed data products. And all the checksum information, like you know, what's the checksum for this particular file, we stage that back to the workflow submit host so that it can be recorded in our provenance uh, catalog and made available for subsequent jobs for use. So, you know, when a job starts, uh, check some information for the inputs for that job is sent over uh, Condor file IO. And when a job completes, uh, information about uh, the checksums for newly data, newly generated data products is brought back using inbuilt Condor file transfer. Uh, some other recent developments which we have done to sort of close the loop in terms of giving our users maximum facility is to try and address the case where, for example, you know, uh, as a user, you don't have a way of uh, computing the checksums beforehand for your raw inputs. So our transfer tool called Pegasus Transfer can also check some files during file transfers. So based on whether a checksum is available or not for raw inputs, uh, the Pegasus Planner decides what files should be checksumed and we indicate it to Pegasus transfer via a flag. Uh, you know, there are some optimizations we have done, but in general, uh, you know, there is a case where there can be an extra transfer involved, where to compute the checksum, Pegasus transfer has to pull down your data first uh, on the node where Pegasus transfer job is running, and then uh, use that checksum uh, for the jobs uh, subsequently. Uh, the other modification we did was that once the data products, the final outputs that have been staged to your output server of choice, we want to be able to make sure that where the data is now residing after your workflows have completed, the checksum is correct. So Pegasus transfer can do an additional pull down and uh, verify these remote checksums. And again, most of the times this will involve an extra transfer to the file that has to be pulled. So as you can see, you know, we're doing a lot of checksums. There could be some additional costs associated with uh, this in terms of computing and, uh, you know, transferring of data. So we have also taken care of uh, updating our monitoring infrastructure to uh, record these uh, overheads and present it to the user. So overall, some cases that we have addressed in our approach so far is that we can avoid triggering integrity checks for raw inputs if checksums not available in the replica catalog and the user desires so. We can 
compute checksums of input files for which the user did not provide checksums. We allowed that we can pull down output data after stage out to the output side to verify the checksum. And our goal has been that you know we wanted to give a complete end-to-end -end solution for our non-shared FS deployments where we can do integrity checking of files at each step wherever possible. So some initial results with uh, integrity checking turned on. So you know we have already uh, deployed uh, this uh, feature for a subset of uh, users, and they have been trying this out on their production runs uh, on OSG. So we did a production run a couple of months back, and you know we actually noticed that there were 60 integrity errors that were caught in the wild. And when we mention about these errors, these errors are those errors which may not have been caught or triggered workflow failures otherwise. Uh, so we did some analysis of these errors and we noticed that they essentially took place on three different hosts. There was first one was on University of Colorado. Again, like, you know, all this was running in Open Science Grid and then the other two hosts were at uh, University of Nevada. So for the first host, we noticed that there was a bad checksum for the kink executable uh, associated. And then uh, we uh, on our last host, we had like 56 errors where, you know, there for the same input data file, the uh, bad checksum was being computed. But when we looked, the site level cache still had a good copy of this file. So it seems that, you know, when we're using uh, uh, stash CP for transfers, the node level cache got corrupted somehow. And then we had a black hole effect of where, like, you know, the jobs are landing on the same node and repeatedly failing. So right now, uh, what we have uh, exposed uh, in Pegasus uh, is a Boolean dial where, you know, you can either turn on or turn off uh, integrity checking. And when you turn on integrity checking, it's full integrity checking. And that will be the default case for non-shared FS and Condor, or Condor IO deployments uh, when 4.9 is released. Uh, internally, we are still debating about some intermediate dials which we may want to expose to users. And we are also you know, looking for feedback if uh, you, know, you have some suggestions of what intermediate dials you would like to see uh, in Pegasus. So, you know, some which we have considered in our discussions are, you know, like, you know, there's a base, no checking uh, dial. Then we can turn on the dial to have, say that only the raw inputs uh, can be checksumed, or we can say all input files and all intermediate files should be checksumed. We can also say all files, including the staged final outputs can be checksumed. So, you know, as you increase the dial, uh, the number of files that get checksumed increases. So at this point, uh, you know, I'm going to actually move to a demo of this feature, and then, uh, you know, I'm happy to take questions uh, if uh, there are any. So I'm just going to switch applications right now. Are people able to see the terminal? And uh, is the size correct? I guess it is. Um, so here, uh, you know, I'm running um, a 490 dev version. So it's a nightly build, a latest nightly build. And I'm going to show you a, a, a test case which we are running on our test infrastructure to make sure that we have uh, everything uh, working correctly. So in my Pegasus RC file, you know, we just have Pegasus integrity dot checking as true. It can be turned off if a user wanted. Um, 
So for this example, we have one raw input file and in my, yeah, let me just run this test and then So what this test does is it runs our simple black diamond canonical workflow example and gets it for submission in a non-shared non FS file system on the local Condor pool infrastructure which we have at uh, ISI. Now if I look at my uh, replica catalog file, I've been using a file risk catalog. So we just tell Pegasus that there's one file f.a, it exists locally, and there's a checksum value. So in this case, we opted to uh, provide the checksum uh, for the raw input file. Let's see if our workflow is running. Some jobs have started running. So let's look into our uh, workflow submit directory, the directory where you know all the Condor submit files are. And there, I will look at one of the Pegasus like descriptions for the jobs. So if I open this file, You can see that, you know, initially, like we are just transferring in the data which is required for this particular file. And then, you know, we have developed this new tool called Pegasus Integrity, which will do the integrity check. And then it also prints timings, which we record in our monitoring infrastructure. The job runs, and then finally the outputs get staged out. And how the checksum information is being uh, transmitted to the job is using a meta file which uh, Pegasus generated when it generated the executable workflow, where we are telling the job that you know this is the checksum for your raw input file. And similarly, once a job completes. There's a meta file generated, which captures uh, the checksum for uh, the outputs that were created by this job. And this meta file gets brought back uh, automatically to the workflow submit host, and then we record it in our monitoring infrastructure. So let's see where our uh, workflow is so far. So we are running the second uh, set of jobs. So let's wait for a minute or so for this uh, workflow to co uh, complete, and then I can also run Pegasus statistics to show um, what instrumentation which we have done on giving you feedback about what are the overheads of this approach and uh, if there are any effects uh, to your workflow workbench. And so here, I just wanted to show you, uh, you know, there's a stage out job that this workflow has, where we are staging out the data to a final location, which is on the shared storage. And, you know, we are also getting Pegasus transfer to verify the checksums. The Pegasus transfer is smart enough, you know, if the file was locally available, it won't do an extra pull down. And all, and, Anywhere and everywhere, you know, we do any checksums or compute checksums. We do print the timings so that, you know, it gets correlated to our monitoring infrastructure. Um, 
our final job is about to start. You know, uh, while I'm waiting for this workflow to finish, I can also take any questions if you have so far about the presentation slides or how uh, integrity checking has been incorporated into Pegasus. Yeah, so uh, the way we have uh, e-job configured in this workflow, uh, e-job runs for a minute. So we are. Uh, you know, as our uh, monitoring daemon populates uh, the checksums in the internal SQLite database, we also have, uh, for internal purposes, uh, a cache file created at a workflow level that computes all the checksum values for the files that are generated. So you can see checksum values for all the outputs that we have uh, generated and also for the executables that were shipped. We are almost towards the end of this workflow. Yeah, so now you can see our workflow has completed. So let's uh, run Pegasus statistics uh, on this uh, directory to see what uh, information we get, additional information now we get about our integrity checks. So at the top level, you know, now users will see this thing known as integrity metrics, and it will report to you like that for this workflow run, 10 files uh, checksums were compared and it took us three minutes, uh, three seconds to compare them. And then, you know, we also generated checksums for the intermediate files and the files generated by the workflow. So there were eight file checksums that were generated and that was the total duration. Uh, again, in this workflow, our uh, files are simple ASCII files, barely a kilobyte or each. So, you know, the checksum doesn't take that much time. Uh, if you want a breakdown further of the integrity statistics, then you can look in the integrity file where we try and do some more winning. So we try and uh, do the differentiation between the input and outputs, whether there was an input file check for a job or there were outputs for uh, a job checked. In this example, since you know for the raw input, we already had the checksum computed, we didn't compute any checksum for the input file. We only computed checksums for the output files, and we have a breakdown of the duration. And uh, this uh, sort of brings me towards the end of my presentation. So at this moment, I can take any questions if uh, the attendees have about uh, what you have seen so far. Uh, great talk, Karen. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, I'm Chang. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Chang. Yeah, I just have a simple question. Uh, so, what if like two jobs write to the same file and then um, uh, 
uh, there are cases that maybe two rights mean one comes first and the other comes. Yeah. Uh, so, so in general, in Pegasus, in our model, uh, you know, two jobs cannot write to the same file. So, okay. you know, if a job is generating some output, it has to be identified with the LFN, which is a logical identifier. I and see. LFN means that, you know, it, it is uniquely identifying that piece of data. So, so, so that means although I specify, for example, an output file name in my job, then but Pegasus will still assign a unique ID to that output file. No, I, uh, what I was saying is that uh, if a Pegasus sees that there is a file with the same name or with the same elephant, mm -hmm. then it takes it to mean that it's exactly same piece of data. So you know when you are uh, uh, generating your workflows, then users need to take care of the fact that, you know, if a job is generating a unique output, then there's a unique logical identifier associated with it. Okay, gotcha. Any other questions? Okay. Um, all right. Thanks a lot for joining us for this series of online Pegasus office hours, and we hope to see you in two months' time for our next presentation. And uh, this presentation is also available on our website, and you and a video recording of this presentation will be, will be made available. And you're uh, welcome to contact us on our support channels. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. All right, bye-bye.